proposed in the <clears throat> finance bill, which will come before Parliament. But you have mentioned that they are, there is a team of economic advisors. Right. Evident Day has been in your campaign team throughout the campaign before the elections. So is the current National Treasury Cabinet Secretary, Professor Njugunandongo. When you came to the presidential debate and you made the remarks on the 26th of July, which I quoted you verbatim, I think you said majority of taxes that are in that bracket, 15 almost you said, but we need to integrate at least these 15 different types of taxes. Did they not advise you or you did not take the advice? Precisely, if you heard me clearly, there are many other taxes that we have since removed. You know, so you, you must look at it in context, yeah? What my economic team advised that time is that we need to relook at these taxes. When we came into government, we found a situation. The country was in a crisis. And by the way, I have had to make very difficult decisions. In fact, coming into office, I had to cancel the borrowing of about 300 billion shillings that the intention was to borrow that would have taken the country down the cliff. I had to step in and stop many of the uh, subsidies that were being dished left, right and center. I had to make many changes. <clears throat> I had to reorganize the whole budget because we found a country headed and sliding into bankruptcy. And so when you find that kind of situation, you have to deal with the situation with the, with the urgency and with the acuteness of thinking that is required. Okay. Yeah? You don't operate outside a context. Mm -hmm. So the question that uh, you have asked me, did we remove some? Did we look at the fuel issue? Yes. We said, while it is true that we have a crisis and we have to we have to deal with a, 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 a pending bill of 700 billion for the roads that we have. While it is also true that we have to look at what additionally we can do, but we need to put a relief on Kenyans. Okay. That's why, apart from, and, and you know the reason why the, the tax on uh, the VAT on, uh, on on fuel or, or petro petroleum products is much more attractive is because it is spread across all Kenyans. So everybody carries a small bit of it. Okay. But we have also knocked down other taxes from the same fuel as I have told you. IDF we've taken down, road development <coughs> maybe we've taken it down, and a host of other taxes that we have taken down. Okay. Final question on this. Um, this is an issue Mr. President, which dates back to 2013 as a condition by the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, in which then the lead of the majority party, the current defense seer who sits in cabinet, Adam Duale, said that the 181 MPs have been convinced by the party leadership, the President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto, on the rationale of the 8% VAT on petroleum products. He continued, 181 is a very big number and will convince our members. And this being a precautionary facility by the IMF, can you tell the Kenyan people that there's no extra hand of pressure on the Kenyan government by the International Monetary Fund? My good friend, the International Monetary Fund does not run the government of Kenya. I do. IMF does not make decision for the government of Kenya. I do. IMF are our partners. They work with us on our priorities. They work with us on our proposals. They support us where they can. They give us advice where they can, but ultimately, we make the decisions ourselves. And it is not up to IMF to see how to sort out the 680 billion that we have on the road sector. It is not up to any other person, it is up to us. When I get out of uh, 
this office and go to this uh, village and that constituency and that ward. It is not the IMF that is asked about roads. It is the government of Kenya that I run. So I think there is always this thinking that, uh, uh, you know, external factors dictate to us. I think uh, you know me better. Mm -hmm. I can stand up to any pressure from any corner. Mm -hmm. I make the right decisions for our country. Your Excellency, you said, and uh, this is not just today, even previously, that uh, the Jubilee Handshake Administration went on an irresponsible borrowing spree. They took loans worth 4.1 trillion shillings in just the five years of 2018 to 2022. How much is our public debt today, Mr. President? Our public debt is in the region of uh, 8.8 .8 trillion, close to 9 trillion. That's where we are. <coughs> and so that you can contextualize this, it is the reason why, if you look at this budget, I have made a deliberate, conscious decision. In fact, against the advice of IMF. IMF actually wanted us to borrow slightly more. I told them no. You know, I told them no, we're not borrowing. And that is why if you look at the fiscal deficit, you know, the money we are borrowing, we have reduced it from 1.1 trillion last year to 630 billion this year. We have reduced almost 500 billion because I am conscious that we are not in a good place. I am also aware what is happening to other countries. There are countries in our continent that have defaulted in their uh, payments. When I am president, Kenya will not go that route. And that is why even when, um, you know, many people thought it was a joke. I told them, we are not borrowing beyond where we are. So how much are you planning that to is borrow why, in this year? That is why, uh, Latif, you saw there was a delay of salaries for about two, three days, about uh, a month, uh, uh, in April. Yep. Yes. Because, you know, some characters thought that I was joking. I told them, listen, we are going to live within our means. Even if we have today delay for salaries for two, three days, we will. So that people begin to internalize that we cannot continue borrowing. And let me tell you, I have heard many people say, oh, you know, you can't tax, your, uh, there is no country that can tax itself into <coughs> prosperity. That's correct. Yeah? But you cannot accumulate the debt into bankruptcy as an option. It cannot be an option, right? And there is a question I want to ask my fellow countrymen and women. Are we overtaxed? That is the question that we need to ask. And I want to answer that question. Yes. Is Kenya, are Kenyans overtaxed? Mm -hmm. Let me give you the statistics. OECD countries, yeah? OECD countries, the tax as a percentage of GDP, the average is 34% of GDP. 34%. You have uh, from Turkey, which is 22% of GDP, to France, which is 45% of GDP. Okay? Let's leave the OECD. Let us come to our continent. Our peers, South Africa, Tunisia, Morocco. They are between 23 and 28% of GDP. Tax as a percentage of GDP. Where is Kenya? Kenya is at 14%. Kenya is at 14%. Meaning, we are paying half in terms of tax what our peers in our continent are paying. And you see, society is reflected by the quality of public goods, roads, hospitals, schools, 
water. That is what a society is measured. If you, you will find that if you don't have working schools, if you don't have no running water, if you don't have good roads, you cannot, what kind of society are you? So the big question, and I want to tell my countrymen and women, please, we are not overtaxing ourselves. In fact, if we were to match yeah. our peers, mm. my intention is to take this slowly, the way Mwai Kibake did. When Mwai Kibake came into office, we were collecting about 220 uh, billion. By the time he was living in 10 years, we were collecting almost a trillion. He had moved it four times, right? Yep. Now we are at 14. If you look at the budget this year, I want to move it from 14 to 16 percent of GDP. By God's grace, <clears throat> maybe uh, next year, 18, maybe like that, yeah. because we have to be realistic, you know? If we do not pay taxes, we cannot be like the countries we want to be, uh, we want to be in, in, their, in their shoes. Like we, we, will be, we will be going backwards. Mm -hmm. So the, the real cardinal, because, and I want to uh, tell my good friends, you know, it's good to have information. Because I hear many people are saying, oh, you know, we are being overtaxed. The real, the real issue is that our tax as a percentage of GDP, if we manage to uh, get this uh, finance bill through, mm. we will move from 14 to 16. Before the we will still in. be way below what our peers are. I want to come back onto the issue of debt because, I mean, it's also influencing how much you want to spend in the mm. next financial year yeah. and raising revenue to pay, repay these debts. 1.2 trillion shillings, if I'm not wrong, is our debt bill in the next financial year. And if you just look at how much we are paying in terms of debt, and then you look back at that close to 9 trillion shillings that has been borrowed in the last uh, 10, 15 years, questions are, where has that money gone? And so I want to ask you, Mr. President, do you feel that the money that has been borrowed has actually gone to be value for Kenyans? I do not want to point fingers at no administration. I do not want to say what happened in the last uh, administration. I have said enough of it. I just want to speak to the present and to the future. And I want to, t to tell my countrymen and women that I want to be held to account. I am ready. That is why I believe in accountability. For the first time, I am the one who pushed for the change of standing orders so that ministers of my administration can go to parliament and ask questions because we want accountability. As we talk, I am pushing so that we have an office in parliament of the leader of opposition funded by the government of Kenya to make sure that public resources are being used appropriately. And I like what you're saying. I, I, issue of that is the, exactly what I want because, because I want as I collect taxes, as the people of Kenya contribute their money as taxes, they must be put to good use. They should not be put in projects like the BBI. Okay. They should not be put in projects like the Azimio thing. They must be put in tangible projects that make a difference okay. in the lives of the people. So with that then, Mr. President, are you prepared in your administration to publish 